A lot of times people think of turbulence as the wind hitting the nose. This is Captain Stuart Walker. After more than 30 years of flying, he knows a lot about turbulence. And there's more than one type. We've actually got the winds coming from all different directions of the airplane. He's here to explain the main types of turbulence, how they impact your flight, and what he, and you, can do to get the smoothest ride. There's many types of turbulence that you, we can find out uh, when we're flying, but the four main types are clear air turbulence, thermal turbulence, mechanical turbulence, and wake turbulence. Clear air turbulence is exactly that. It's clear, it's air, it's turbulent. Meaning it may look clear outside your window, then the plane starts to shake. Ideally, if we're traveling, we've got a nice tailwind. And if we've got the jet on our tail, we might have 150 knots of extra ground speed just because of that tailwind. But if the jet stream veers off, I'm going to lose some of that uh, tailwind. And as I do, I change the dynamics of the airplane. And basically, I can get a rocking motion or I can get a, a large pitch up if it's a shear from another crossing wind. So what's happening here has a lot to do with jet streams, those invisible rivers of air that encircle the globe. And when they are bent and turned, they create shears in the air, and those pockets of shear are where we're finding that clear air turbulence. So we've got 150 knots off the left wing, and all of a sudden it's shifting to a tailwind. We're expecting that it's probably going to have a little bit of a shear. But clear air turbulence is tough to predict, Walker says. Pilots rely on modeling, graphical displays on board, and information from dispatchers to try to avoid turbulent areas. The good news about clear air turbulence, though, is it typically does not last uh, but a couple thousand feet. So if we just descend a couple thousand or climb a couple thousand, we can usually fly out of some of that rough air. Thermal turbulence is just the opposite of clear air turbulence. We can see it. That's because it's caused by rising warm air, or thermals, which can create clouds. Cumulonimbus clouds, the kind that carry thunderstorms, are the biggest concern. Typically, planes fly over most of the weather, but clouds can sometimes tower up into a plane's cruising altitude. So if our aircraft encountered, uh, for some reason, flew into an area that had those, those towering clouds, what we would expect is we've got a lot of those vertical shafts either coming up or down, and so we're going to get some pretty violent movement on our aircraft. Not only that, but we might have those hailstones that might damage the aircraft or our engines. So for that reason, it's always best to turn around and fly around the weather. But dispatchers try to stop this scenario before it even happens by giving pilots a detailed flight plan, which contains in it a route that should avoid these weather systems. When I get the flight plan, I've got some of the same tools in my cockpit. When the weather changes and moves and uh, shifts, I get the real-time information. And when I get that, I'm able to make much better decisions about my route of flight or my altitude. But don't worry if you fly through clouds on your next flight. I get a lot of people that sometimes ask, do you just avoid all the clouds? And the answer is no. Uh, when we have a nice strata cloud, those clouds, if we fly through those, you probably wouldn't even notice. Mechanical turbulence has kind of a funny name, but it's exactly that. There's something mechanically in the way of that wind that's blowing. Down at lower altitudes, it might be trees, it might be buildings, it might be hills. Up at higher altitudes, it could be something a lot more than just the trees and the hills. It could be the Rocky Mountains. The Rockies can create what's called mountain wave. It happens when air blows over the mountains and falls down the other side, creating rotors of air that are then carried up into the jet stream, sometimes hundreds of miles from the mountains. If we're flying and we've got the Rockies over here and we've got that strong wind, with those rotors as they come up and they impact my aircraft, sometimes I'm going to see an increasing performance and then a decreasing performance of the aircraft. It might cause my aircraft to pitch up slightly and then back down. Typically, they're not as violent if I'm hitting them head on, but if I'm hitting them from the side, sometimes it can give you a good rocking motion. To try to avoid these situations, Walker says he communicates with air traffic control to learn of any reports of mountain wave before entering mountainous airspace. As a pilot, we're always concerned about mountain wave because just like clear air turbulence, it can just all of a sudden 
be there and not there. But if we can fly at a lower altitude, we can avoid some of those rotors, or we can sometimes fly above those uh, that altitude and avoid them as well. Wake turbulence is something that we encounter when we come in for landing. It's something that uh, comes naturally off of our wings. It's a byproduct of the lift on the wings. As that uh, airflow directs the wind over and around, off the wingtip, we get these vortices that come off the wing, on both wings, and so you can actually see them trailing off at times. Think of it like the wake off of a boat. The vortices of air coming off the plane's wings tend to dissipate out from the aircraft. If we're following too closely behind another aircraft, that wake, instead of falling and dissipating down here, it stays active for a couple minutes and it can be blown back into our course. So if we're the aircraft following, we might encounter that wake turbulence and we get basically a little bit of a rocking. How much rocking depends on the plane in front. Typically, larger aircraft produce more wake. Still, this doesn't worry Walker much. The good news about wake turbulence is that all we have to do is adjust a couple, you know, 50 feet, a little bit left or right, and we're out of it. Though pilots are working to keep the plane flying smoothly, Walker does have a few tips for flyers looking for the calmest ride. First, where you sit. If you are one of those that are fearful of turbulence, you know that actually sitting over the wing, maybe further to the forward part of the cabin, is gonna be a slightly better ride than the back of the bus. Second, when you fly. Maybe book it in the morning. Typically in the morning, you don't have quite the heating and you don't have that thermal turbulence that we were talking about. And as every pre-flight announcement says, keep your seatbelt fastened. You never know when you may experience rough air.